Um, okay. Um, so for me, I think a large part of my focus in those moments is to work. Mm-hmm. Uh, like we're here for a specific reason. Mm-hmm. Um, let's make sure we get that. We can make it fun and enjoyable while we're doing that, but that's the like the ultimate goal. Um, and I think a piece of that um, bleeds into the focus and keeping mm-hmm. the focus on the reason that we're here in this room. Yeah. Um, but also like I've, and so, so I think a lot of, I think a lot of times people look at, oh, they bought liquor. Oh, they had uh weed. Oh, they had, they were playing music too loud. Oh, there was a bunch of people around. I think all of those are like convenient excuses to prevent people from being, accountable on their action, right? Mm-hmm. Mental Health Monday. Mental Health Monday. Mental Health Monday. Three this year. Mm-hmm. Um, and like they're in there meditating, sit with your thoughts. Mm-hmm. How does it feel to they do it in like parks and green areas, quiet spaces. Um, and like the amount of vulnerability that these women are coming coming from um, as the the guides are kind of talking them through things was like more vulnerable than I've, I've got to witness before, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I kept thinking like while we're doing that, I was like, wow. <laughs> like the cliche, men don't have spaces like this. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's because the exact thing you just said, it's not, we're not, we're not actually finding a solution. We're just moving the goalposts. Mm-hmm. Um, which is very interesting. And like, we technically have spaces like that now, but if the person who makes the space isn't boosted loud enough, yeah. the people who didn't know they have access to those things are like, we don't have this, we don't have this, we don't have this, we have, we don't have this. And then people like me, the immature version of me would have been like, now nah, I did this in 2018, yeah, 2019, sure. 2020, y'all didn't show up. For sure. And I have to be mature enough to be like, I, I'm going to put that in a cupboard <laughs> <laughs> and be like, actually, I have done this. If yeah. you guys want that, we plan on doing this on this, this, and this for a limited time. But then those folks, because I've had these combos, are like, well, why did you stop? It's like, well, things take money. And if people don't pay or if I have to spend time making money somewhere else because I no longer have the time or the mental or emotional capacity to do that thing for free or ask the people who did me favors to do it for free, the community doesn't think we need to raise money for those people and yeah. give it to them and be like, okay, could we schedule something? For sure. The community is like, you've let us down. For sure. It's never, I don't want to say it's never, but seldomly isn't the community picks you up and after the community picks you up, there's a different part of the community that says, okay, how do we maintain this and what does that look like? Yeah. Like, that's why when people get better, to me, that's the most dangerous time mm. when it comes to mental health and when it comes to wellness not because they're finally better, but because there is this sigh of relief and this relaxation of it's finally over. And it's like, no, what if I told you that's actually the beginning? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. actually when things starts. Yeah. That's when the environment of the people around those people now need to start thinking about for every time I tell someone, hey, go get therapy. Am I willing to be a part of their change in their environment? Like when they go to therapy and they start to realize things about themselves, things about the people around them. If I happen to be one of those people on the list, am I going to be willing to grow with them or is it going to be, well, you're no longer a problem. So why should I have to work on what's wrong with you? Yeah. And it's like, how do you approach that? So when it comes to you making vulnerable space for these women and the work that you've done, 
how have you approached I don't want to ask you how do you make it fun I think you already know how to make things fun how do you how do you create a space that is safe without having to say this is a safe space for you um Okay. Um, so for me, I think a large part of my focus in those moments is to work. Mm -hmm. Um, like we're here for a specific reason. Mm -hmm. Um, let's make sure we get that. We can make it fun and enjoyable while we're doing that, but that's the, like the ultimate goal. Um, and I think a piece of that, um, bleeds into the focus and keeping mm -hmm. the focus on the reason that we're here in this room. Yeah. Um, but also like I've, and so, so I think a lot of, I think a lot of times people look at, oh, they bought liquor. Oh, they had uh weed oh they had they were playing music too loud oh there was a bunch of people around i think all of those are like convenient excuses to prevent people from being accountable on their action right mm -hmm. liquor doesn't make you a creep yeah what's making you a creep is you yeah right so i've had liquor on sets before and i've also kicked people out of sets for being too drunk on on set or being you know uh not focusing on set because that can happen too right mm -hmm. um so I think the focus is the is the the first part um of that solution for me. But also just like I I my mind doesn't even go into creep shit in those moments. Like it's not I'm not even it's not like I have to tell myself not to do something because I'm not thinking. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I'm I'm not approaching this situation as a How could I get something from her? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, that's as far as photo shoots have gone in the past. Mm -hmm. I'll say that. Now, when it comes to... That's a good framing, I bet. Yeah. When it comes to the steps that go into that, like when you do your setup or when you have your shooting environment... Mm -hmm. What do you allow and what do you not allow? Like, what have you come to realize? All right, if I do this, people will think this is okay. So we take that off the table. Um. So I I I cut out uh, anything but water at this point. Mm -hmm. Like we're not. Well, you can drink juice. You can, yeah. No no alcohol. No drugs. I mean, mm -hmm. not doing that because I think what people I think the the alcohol starts. Because people are trying to make people comfortable. Mm -hmm. or at Which least, is at understandable. Least at least that's the frame. It's understandable. Yeah. And like getting them comfortable is the start. For sure. Yeah. Um, I think that's a convenient excuse for you as your craft. Mm -hmm. Because I think what, what, what I've learned makes people more comfortable is having a clear vision coming into this, the space. Mm -hmm. Having something that you really want out of it at the end. Yeah. Um, as far as like the creativity part um, and being able to share that those thoughts and those ideas with the person, I think the what makes people uncomfortable is they're not knowing what they're going into. They've never met you before. They don't mm -hmm. know who you are. Um, they don't know how you move. So I think if you demonstrate who you are mm -hmm. uh, by not being a creep. <laughs> um, <laughs> now you gotta say that. You gotta say that. You gotta. You do. You do have to say that. Yeah. Uh, coming into it with a clear vision, like this is what I'm looking for out of it. This is this is how I envision you in this space, in this shoot, in this art, etc. Mm -hmm. um, and holding yourself accountable and then sticking to it. With people that you've worked with from the past coming to the present, yeah. Do you think you ever had any mentors or people that were good examples of what does self accountability look like when it comes to your craft? Or you kind of had to figure that out as you went forward. It started out figuring it out on my own. Okay. Um, 
it started out having to figure out what this was supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. um, how to uh, elevate the space mm -hmm. um, and make it feel more professional. Um, but I think that's a personal goal thing, right? Like, I, I think my vision for myself and all of this was to reach higher heights. Like, not only, like, I'm not, I'm not, this, this room right here is not my, um, as far as like photo shoots and stuff goes, this room is not my end goal. I want to be, I want to be here, mm -hmm. right? I look at this magazine. I want to be in this magazine. Uh, uh, Do you want to speak on the magazine that you work for or? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, just getting, getting to a point of like aspiration. Um, and then realize that, oh, maybe I need to change something up. And then you meet people along the way in that aspiration and you're like, oh, I've been doing this not wrong, but I could be doing it better. Mm -hmm. And then you keep learning how to be better at it. Um, which I think leads to the magazine, mm, a dirty magazine. Um, you asked earlier how I create safe spaces. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a piece of me, because I was focused before, I have a goal, I'm, I'm looking for this specific thing out of a photo shoot. Um, I didn't intentionally create safe spaces. They, they, they happened because I was focused. Okay. Um, so when, you're, when your focus is where it should be, the space it never becomes something it shouldn't be. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's a piece of it. I don't think that's that's it entirely. Mm -hmm. um, I think I've been fortunate by not being a creep mm -hmm. myself, but also um, allowing people to trust the vision more than they trust me, Okay, I think is important or, or was important. Um, but with this magazine, mm -hmm. a dirty magazine, um, a... How do you pronounce it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Four M's. Like, mm, something tastes good, something mm -hmm. feels good, something looks good. Yeah. Um, as I've learned, it's a very black thing. I didn't realize that before. I didn't realize that was a us thing, but it's a us thing. It is a us thing. It um, definitely is, because we, we're good on food. Yeah. Yeah, food, yeah. recipes, association. But also Sonics. That's how, that's we speak through uh, nonverbals a lot, right? Yeah. Um, so, mmm. Mm. <laughs> <dirty bag>, uh, <laughs> okay, cool, cool. Um, I got you. Through doing it, through doing a events with the magazine mm -hmm. i realized a lot more goes into creating a safe space okay. helping the right people around um setting the environment to to actually be comfortable itself did you have to see the production side of things from a company to add it into your own craft or did you feel when you got there and you started doing work for them okay nah this is this is a good fit for me um 